Welcome to E5 Kids on this lovely Sunday morning. Now last week was a brilliant lesson and I hope you had loads of fun making your firecraft and that was from our lesson on Elijah and the prophets of Baal and I just want to say a massive thank you to all you kids working so hard doing your art craft and a double thumbs up to you super adults who are sending in your kids craft and we're going to start with Reese. Reese, you are looking super cool and your picture is brilliant. Great attention to detail. Look at these two princesses, looking stunning, Phoebe and Felicity. And I love your handprints. Welcome to E5 Kids, Hannay. We love your first picture, keep them coming in. Incredible picture, Stephen. You've even painted on your logs as well. Good to see you, Dante likes Anne Lamea. Your work is super neat, what a great picture. Nice work, Anastasia, brilliant use of space and colour. Fantastic work, Abigail, you've even stuck some real twigs on your paper to make it look like a real fire. Wonderful work, Joshua, what a top-notch picture, very artistic. Marvellous job, Joel. Great use of colour. Now, Rebecca told me this week's craft is super hard. You're going to be making a paper windmill and I think you may need an adult's help. But if anything, it's going to be a lot of fun. So why don't you give it a go and email your results to the address on screen. Now, in the Bible, there's something called a call and response psalm. It's Psalm 136. And we're going to do this together. I'm going to need your help. So I'm going to say a verse and you will reply, His love endures forever. Why don't we try it now? His love endures forever. Come on, a bit louder. His love endures forever. Perfect. So Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. His love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens. His love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters. His love endures forever. Who made the great lights. His love endures forever. The sun to govern the day. His love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern the night. His love endures forever. Oh, you were fantastic. Well done. Well done. Great job. Now, I think that we're all ready to worship Jesus. Let's stand to our feet and we're going to sing this song, Nothing is Impossible.
than before. I want to jump higher than before. I want to shout louder than before. Yeah. Come on and say, Freedom. Freedom. spent his whole life standing up for God against the followers of false gods as we learned in last week's lesson. He would also encourage people to turn back to God and to follow his ways. 
Now, despite a few ups and downs along the way, Elijah remained faithful in doing all that God had called him to do for the whole of his life. In his final years, he was able to train up his successor, and that was Elisha. He acquitted him to successfully take over as Israel's prophet. Now, after a life filled serving God, he was able to pass on the baton of being prophet and servant to Elisha. Today's lesson is called Pass It On, because there are people in your life that have something you need. They've learned a lot from God, and they want you to build your life on their wisdom, as well as God's word. Elisha did this when he found Elijah, a godly man, and he followed him. He listened and he learned from him and he was able to receive a double blessing. Let's have a look at this video. Not long before the Lord took Elijah up into heaven in a strong wind, Elijah and Elisha were leaving Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, the Lord wants me to go to Bethel, but you must stay here. Elisha replied, I swear by the living Lord and by your own life that I will stay with you no matter what. And he went with Elijah to Bethel. A group of prophets who lived there asked Elisha, Do you know that today the Lord is going to take away your master? Yes, I do, Elisha answered. But don't remind me of it. Elijah then said, Elisha, now the Lord wants me to go to Jericho, but you must stay here. Elisha replied, I swear by the living Lord and by your own life that I will stay with you no matter what. And he went with Elijah to Jericho. A group of prophets who lived there asked Elisha, Do you know that today the Lord is going to take away your master? Yes, I do, Elisha answered, but don't remind me of it. Elijah then said to Elisha, now the Lord wants me to go to the Jordan River, but you must stay here. Elisha replied, I swear by the living Lord and by your own life that I will never leave you. So the two of them walked on together. Fifty prophets followed Elijah and Elisha from Jericho, then stood at a distance and watched as the two men walked towards the river. When they got there, Elijah took off his coat, then he rolled it up and struck the water with it. At once, a path opened up through the river, and the two of them walked across it on dry ground. After they had reached the other side, Elijah said, Elisha, the Lord will soon take me away. What can I do for you before that happens? Elisha answered, Please, give me twice as much of your power as you give the other prophets, so I can be the one who takes your place as their leader. It won't be easy, Elijah answered. It can happen only if you see me as I am being taken away. Elijah and Elisha were walking along and talking, when suddenly there appeared between them a flaming chariot pulled by fiery horses. Right away, a strong wind took Elijah up into heaven. Elisha saw this and shouted, Israel's cavalry and chariots have taken my master away. After Elijah had gone, Elisha tore his clothes in sorrow. Elisha's coat had fallen off, so Elisha picked it up and walked back to the Jordan River. He struck the water with the coat and wondered, will the Lord perform miracles for me as he did for Elijah? As soon as Elisha did this, a dry path opened up through the water and he walked across. When the prophets from Jericho saw what happened, they said to each other, Elisha now has Elijah's power. They walked over to him and bowed down. We want to give you a chance to discover for yourself how important it is to have people who can spend time with you that you can learn from, especially in their walk with God. Can you make a list of people who come to mind? It can be parents, pastors, family members. Maybe you've got a Christian teacher at your school. Write a list of all those who are just in putting into you. Now, the same way they've got something to pass on to you, do you know, are you aware that you've got something to pass on to others? Your friends, they're watching, they're watching you and they need to see God through your actions and God through your words. Who are you passing on what you know or what you've learned about Jesus? 
maybe you can write down some names. Now I'm going to ask you some questions from today's Bible story. Why don't you pause this video, grab your Bible and read 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 1 to 10. Then answer these questions but remember to pause after every question. Give yourself plenty of time for you and your adult to discuss. When he knew he was about to be taken to heaven, why did Elijah go on a tour to visit different towns? Why did Elijah tell Elisha to leave him alone three times? Why did Elisha ask for a double portion? Was he being greedy? What does Elijah mean by his answer in verse 10? Hello, welcome to this week's craft. So this week's craft, you will need some sort of stick or kebab skewer, could also work. Uh, some red coloured paper, some pins, sellotape and some scissors. And I'll give you one minute to go and grab those items. Welcome back. Hopefully you have the items we need. So this week we are going to make one of these. So hopefully yours will spin, okay? So they look very cool. Okay, so first thing we need to do for a red piece of paper is to make it into a square. So using scissors, and you may need an adult to help you to make it into a smaller square. So I'm just going to cut this bit off first. Just go like that. I think that should be okay actually. Let me just cut a little bit off the side. Try and keep it straight. I hope people will be enjoying the sunshine this week. It's very hot at the moment for this week's craft. So now you have your square, which is perfect. You now need to draw, either using a pen and a ruler, or I'm going to use a leftover bit of paper, to go from corner to corner, drawing a line. So I'm just going to draw corner. So if you've got a ruler, that's good, or anything straight. So I've got my one line there, corner to corner, and then I'm going to do the same on the other side. Okay, so like that. Hopefully you see that. Corner to corner. Okay. And now with your leftover piece of paper that we cut out, you're just gonna cut out a little circle. So you can either draw around something that's a lip, that's a circle shape, or just see what you like cutting out a circle. It's about the small bottle lid size we need. This mine's kind of circle. It's always hard to get it completely. Right? So just a small circle like that. Okay. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so now so we've got this bit and this bit. So now with your lines, you need a pair of scissors, we are gonna cut until it's about an inch away from the middle. So I will, I'll do the first one and then I'll show you. So you start from the corner. Okay, 
so it's the tool's about an inch away from the middle. So you might need your parents to help you. So don't cut all the way down, leave about an inch. And you're doing that all the way around. So try and leave about the same distance around. Okay, so that's all my cut. Okay, so now I'm going to take this one apart, which I made earlier, so we can use a stick. You may need adults to help you through the top of your stick. You need to make, or whatever you have, maybe a skewer, you need to try and make a hole with the pin to go through it. So you may need your adults to help you with this bit. Okay, so that will take a bit of time. Hopefully they can do that for you, put a hole in it. Okay, with your pin, I put a hole in the, not right at the top, but obviously at some part of your stick for your spinner to go on. So next bit we're on this, we're going to use our pin and go through the middle of our circle. Watch your fingers at the back of this one. You may need adults to help you this one so you don't hurt your middle of uh, your finger and you're just going to pop the pin, pop the pin through the middle of the circle. Okay, so we can take that back out now so we've got the hole. You're also going to make a hole where both lines meet in the middle of your square. Also remember to watch your fingers with this one so the pin's gone through to the middle. And we can take that out. Now this is the challenging part which takes a lot of patience. So this is where we come and fold in and this is where we may, we can use some sellotape. So, we fold. When you're folding around, you always fold the same size you're doing. So if you fold in, if you start with the left one, when you get to the next side, you fold with the left one. So I'll show you kind of how I'm doing it. You may find out doing this. Okay, so it's looking a bit like that at the moment. So, fold over, leave that bit up, fold over, leave that bit up, and you work your way around doing the same. Doesn't, you can leave it, you can overlap a bit in the middle, that's fine, because it's a bit easier for us. But this is where you're gonna want a little bit of sellotape, just to help stick. Going down a little bit. You don't need a lot, but it just, it's surprising the difference it makes. Some people use fancy glue guns, or maybe even a bit of blue sack might work. Okay, so we've got that. So now, we're going to go back to our little circle, put the pin back through the middle. You're going to need your parents probably to help you this one. And then, through the middle of our spinner, we're going to put the pin back through and hopefully try and meet your hole at the back. Doesn't necessarily matter if it's a different hole. Okay, so hopefully yours. <laughs> it should look like that now. Let's put that one back up. So it should look like that. Okay. Yes. So now you're going to get your stick and you're going to thread it through the hole that we've made at the top. So there we have it. You may want to put a little bit of sellotape at the back, but it should spin. You have to make sure you send us your photos of yours, because they're going to look very cool spinning, maybe in the wind in your garden. We'd love to see your creation. And I hope you've enjoyed making this week's crack. And I hope to see you all again on Wednesday. It was great to see so many boys on Wednesday for Bible study. But girls, I know you're out there, you should join us as well. It's great fun to spend time together on Wednesdays at four o'clock. Have a good week. I'll see you soon.
cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree his body bowed and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the ancient seal by heavy stone Messiah still and all Jesus' face.